Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm putting myself through a bit of a challenge this time. This is my very first multi-nighter. I'm here for two nights. There's a catch though. I've got no tent this time, limited food, and no air mattress. And uh, just a fire striker for fire. I think I found the spot right here, just in this general area, to where I'm gonna be spending the next two nights. So I'm gonna look around for a nice place to uh, to set up uh, set up shop. So here's the deal. I'm up here on a beautiful hike and cook with a, uh, a bit of soup with me. Problem, I've lost the trail. What do I do now? Well, I've got about an hour left of sunlight, maybe less, and uh, or daylight, and I gotta figure out whether I wanna stay or go and try and find the trail. The risk, of course, if I go, I can get myself more lost, and traveling when it's getting darker, that's a lot more dangerous. So. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna have to make a decision. So in this scenario, my decision is to stay, of course. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, build what's called a snow trench, and that will be my shelter for tonight. So this, this bag is pretty full, but uh, this is the least amount of kit that I've carried uh, in any trip so far. Of course, coming up here, knowing what kind of shelter I was going to build, got to have a shovel. And that's uh, perfectly logical. 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 Sheesh. English is already starting to fail me. You know, uh, an experienced backcountry camper, uh, it's very, very uh, normal that they would have a, a shovel like this. So, let's get digging. So when uh, figuring out where you want to dig this thing, uh, it's important to uh, obviously understand where the wind's coming from. In my scenario, in my case, it's going to be coming from this direction. So <coughs> this way. <laughs> so it's uh, generally pretty important to have the uh, the entrance facing the opposite way, so you're not getting uh, the element just blowing into where you're trying to sleep. Uh. It's actually a, a good practice to, uh, even when you know you're just going to be on an established trail, what if you get injured, you know? So it's a good practice to uh, come with more kit than you need, because um, that will influence your decision to stay or go. And uh, you know, if you stay in one place, it's very hard to get injured if you're well prepared. And you know, if you don't, if you're not well prepared, you're probably feeling the urgency to get back to safety right away, which which can be dangerous, especially when it's dark out. When building this type of shelter, whenever whenever possible, so long as you're not on a big slope, obvious risk of avalanche, is uh, to find a, uh, just maybe like a little hill of snow, a small incline where there's no, or a decline or whatever, whatever you want to call it, where there's no risk of avalanche. That way you can dig into the side rather than having to dig a six feet hole or however long it is, you can you know, at the very top it's going to be deep, but as you go down, the snow is not going to be as deep. Uh, 
which was kind of the scenario here. But what's going to end up happening is in this in this spot, it's it's less gradual, so more more work is needed. Ooh, shoveling, shoveling snow, huh? I haven't dug a trench since my army days. Thankfully snow is a bit easier than packed dirt, or even sand for that matter, gravel. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna get some work done here and uh, check back with you. The, uh, the idea here, I'm sure you're all aware, but the idea here is you want to build a, a grave-like <laughs> body-sized area. Compact enough that it'll hopefully trap some heat. And, uh, you know, big enough for your body to, to be comfortable. Another challenge that I have, if you can see behind me, is I didn't bring a mattress, so I'm going to need to use uh, boughs. The challenge is that uh, they are logged with ice and snow, so I might need to put something down, maybe even the cover for my uh, <clears throat> for my uh, bag, just for an extra layer of protection against the, the wet and the melting that will no doubt happen. I've got the bivy bag, so that's going to be a, a plus. Yeah, all right, check back with you in a bit. So I think I got it to uh, about the right size. I can always shave down more on this end. But now, for my favorite aspect of snowshoes. Stamping time. Stamping time. A great way to warm up too. Well, as I just showed you, the trench is basically ready. Now, I'm going to uh, try and gather some boughs to uh, lay down as a good, uh, as some good bedding, and simultaneously try and find some good firewood. I'm in a new spot this time, so uh, hopefully there's more opportunities for that sort of stuff. Okay, well, let us go. Oh yeah. This is a good piece right here. The uh, the whole the whole branch is dead, so I can even come back to this. I'm not going to take the whole thing down now, but it's uh, what 20 feet feet from my camp, so get all the snow off. It's ready to rock. Couple of dead branches here. That's awesome. Oh, look at this sunset. Yeah. 
Well, that's beautiful, but you know what that means? Darkness is coming. I don't know, do you see any boughs that don't have ice or snow on them? I don't. From a distance it kind of looks like you can see some, but when you get close up, nope. Well, let's keep looking before it gets dark. Well, this tree is, uh, it looks like it's broken off or something a little bit, so maybe just the top came off and I'm, I'm not sure, but this will be a good, uh, a good source of twiggies and also some boughs. I can just knock some of the snow off and it's, you know, it's, it's ready to go. I guess it was shielded by this big tree a little bit. Wow, look at, look at those sights. Yeah, it's a little bit wet, but... I'll just take a few off this tree. I won't take them all. Kill the tree. That is, if it's still alive. And not dying. There we go. Now another <laughs> hundred times that much. Nah but a lot more. Well, I, I do gotta be careful right here because it just it drops down quite, quite drastically. Just, uh, you know, 20, 30 feet that way, so. It, uh, it rained a good uh, 40 millimeters a few nights ago, so I gotta <laughs> find stuff that's not wet. And all of this is just soaked under the snow. Yeah. Maybe I can dry it off a little if I get a fire going. I see some uh, decent branches here, de decent trees. So I'm gonna stop filming and get to work. Sun's uh, just about to set now, so it will be dark very soon. And uh, I haven't even got even a fraction really of uh, bedding down, so let's get to work. Okay, so I've uh, spent the last 45 minutes or so collecting and uh, the reality is I don't I don't have near enough uh, so far, so I'm probably going to keep doing it or collecting into the night. But I did want to show you before dark came, before dark comes, just how this uh, process works here. So typically, what you want to do is uh, when you're cutting these things off, you don't want to cut huge. Uh, huge branches or uncomfortable sized sticks off. So in the event that you do, or just in practice at all, you want to stick the, uh, the thickest side to the outside. So it interlaces in. You don't really have to do that, but it does, in theory, make it more comfortable.
Now, this ground, I, I do need to uh, even it out a bit. That's better, as I was saying. And uh, you'll notice a lot of the bows sort of have a, an angle to them. It probably does help to put them on this sort of angle so it, uh, there's a bit more bounce to it. Sort of get the bigger ones first, I guess. Knock off any excess snow. I, ideally, you do need a few feet of, of these boughs to uh, really get the maximum insulation. All insulation really is is uh, pockets that uh, pockets of warmer air. So if you can trap as much body heat as possible from uh, dispersing into the ground or in the air, that's the uh, that's the idea. And as you get smaller pieces, you just uh, kind of insert them in closer to the middle. Yeah, and just by kneeling down on, on it here, I can feel the spring just from a few layers. And uh, insulation as well. Oh. Now my knee's getting cold, so not near enough. In the morning time, these uh, boughs obviously will be compressed down quite a bit, so... We'll, uh... We'll figure out that problem tomorrow. Some of these are just soaking wet. Now, if you can't find enough good uh, material, boughs and such, but you do have enough to ha create a good space or a good, a good layer, body size layer, the, the best place to uh, build it is where your, your shoulders and your torso will be. And then you can always uh, put a little, a little bit where your boots are. But the, the priority is your body.
about. That's what I got so far. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> a lot more is needed. But the size is about right. I'm uh, 6'2", so I built a, a nice size little hole for me. I will need to uh, continue this probably into the night a bit. Uh, I do have uh, something for the, the roof, so I'll show you that probably when it's dark. Back to work. Okay, well, darkness is pretty much here. And uh, finally, uh, took this, take, I've taken the snowshoes off, which is uh, a little smidgen of relief. Walking around with those damn, huge damn things. So, uh, got a, a decent, but probably insufficient amount of boughs down. Um, but it should be okay for my body tonight. I've heard it said that you need probably three times the thickness that what I of what I have. I have about a foot, so we'll uh, we'll put that to the test tonight. And now, let's put up the uh, the roof. So for the roof, I've got just the uh, the fly the fly to my tent. So. It's probably just the right size for this sort of thing. <clears throat> I'm going to get a couple sticks for uh, the pegs. I probably want this uh, this roof closer to me, but I I absolutely hate when I can't sit up in a shelter. Well, home sweet home. This is uh, this is home for tonight. I've got the three sides pegged down, and I just bring this over to uh, complete the uh, the roof, the fourth end here. Now, I wait. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to put the fire, but I don't have a whole lot of wood, so I'm going to wait. Until then, I guess I could tell you a bit about the shelter. So this is, uh, as I said, this is a snow trench of sorts. And the benefits to this is uh, it's a very effective emergency shelter. It's uh, unlike a Quincy or a, you know, even a lean-to or a, uh, obviously an igloo. Those things take a lot of time to set up. But... This one, if you're caught in the elements and you don't have a way to get out, this is a good, a good way to uh, get out of the wind, the snow, and even the rain if it's raining, especially if you have a tarp. The downsides, unless you have a good roof, is you're not going to be, at least from what I've, what I've read, you're not going to be doing, or you're not going to be trapping too much heat, because it's just all going to escape out, out of the top. But, uh, and also, it's pre it probably loses its effectiveness the, the bigger you make it. So if it's uh, being built for more than two people, it probably uh, loses its uh, whatever insulation it, it does provide. 
but here it is my own little my own little snow grave we'll see how I, I I do in it tonight so I did bring a sleeping bag the uh, the objective was or what I was hoping to do was just to see how effective this sort of bedding would be if all you have is you know just the clothing the clothing you have on or even a, uh, a bivy blanket or, or an emergency blanket so I do have a bivy blanket or a bivy bag so I'll see it's got some reflective uh, reflectix in it so we'll see how effective that is if it gets too cold tonight I might have to tap out and get to the sleeping bag but uh, the reality of tonight what I don't have is a big meal all I have is uh, a little morsel and I'll show you that later and I'll need to make a fire if I want to <laughs> if I want to eat it well I'm just gonna wait around for a bit it's pretty early it's uh, just after five o'clock so another ten hours of, of darkness here yippee yes I've got some extra clothing. I'm probably going to throw that on before uh, before the hour is up. Well, I'm done waiting. My uh, feet are getting cold. <laughs> and uh, it's time to get the spark up this fire. As you can see, with the, uh, got the shelter in behind me and I've dug sort of a fire pit conjoining the whole structure, if you will. Uh, I've uh, got a bit of fire starter here already, and uh, remember this guy? Well, I'm going to use it again, if I can. The good old Duraflame fire starter. It's actually quite bright to, to my eyes anyway the, there's a full moon out clouds have come in a bit whoa but it's really illuminating all the snow and everything around me which is kind of cool I've just been uh, sitting around for the past couple hours waiting I'm starting to feel the boredom I've uh, I'm sure you guys have watched alone or seen people staying out in the woods for uh, days and days and you they start talking about you know as the days go go along especially when they're it, during their downtime you start hearing them talk about how, how much they miss their family and how much they don't want to be there and of course in a survival uh, uh, in, in the case of surviving that would be amplified for sure. This is just, well, I hesitate to call this a survival simulation. It's more of a, more of a emergency simulation, which I suppose you can chalk up as a, a survival type thing. I'm doing something I've never done before, going out with a, without a tent or a, a mattress and uh, limited food. So all those thoughts and feelings on day one, night one, are, are coming to me. It's unfortunate. My uh, One of my batteries, I only have two batteries. One of my batteries is already dead. I've got a battery pack with me and I'll use that to, to charge, uh, charge the battery back up. If I'm out of battery <laughs> by, by tomorrow, then I'm not staying in another night, that's for sure. If I can't film it, I'm not being I'm not staying up here. <laughs> no. 
a lot of this wood is, uh, at least the bark anyway, is just covered in ice and snow. So I've, I've cut it, I've cut it down to smaller pieces in the hope that it will catch a lot quicker. I'm starting to get hungry, as you can imagine. It's uh, 7.30, I think. And I've got to warm my feet up. They are freezing. These boots aren't waterproof. Uh, and they are... I took them off. I, I put on my my long johns. That was fun. And uh, they're, they're pretty wet, so I'm going to get them dried off if I can. Oh. Let me give you a better look of uh, my shelter here. As you can see, I've I've added a uh, sort of a ridge pole, and I, I would like to get more. It's not supposed to snow tonight, but any sort of weight on top of this uh, this tent fly is gonna make it sag and probably eventually collapse it, which is not good. So I'll get more tomorrow. The forecast for tonight, temperatures temperature-wise, supposed to get to negative five which is cold enough. As I'm just sitting here, uh, as I was just sitting here, starting to get cold, uh, there's, I'm pretty sure there's no way I'm not, I'm not gonna be using the, uh, the sleeping bag tonight. Uh, I'm gonna get this uh, fire roaring here and then uh, I'll uh, check back with you and hopefully cook up uh, the little bit of food that I do have. Fire's going uh, decently now. Good enough for me to cook on. And what do I have to eat tonight? Well, I'm pretty excited about this. One. One Lipton chicken noodle. As the, uh, as the situation entailed, I was just going for a day hike with a beer and a soup, and then I was going to hike down. So lunch becomes dinner. Ugh. Water's freezing a bit. I gotta watch out for that. <coughs> and because I don't have a lid, I've got some tin foil here. Nothing worse than getting ashes in your in your meals or your coffee or whatever it is. Ow. Yeah. You gotta make sure the fire is stable. The last thing you want is to dump the water right in the fire.
Wait for that to boil. Oh, I think she's boiling. Get it back on the boiler. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh. Yeah, unfortunately, this battery is, uh, it's still good for now, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's negative five, as I said, and uh, I'm already through my one battery. And it's not even uh, 8.30 on the first night. So I, I highly doubt. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be doing a second night. Because I won't be able to film it. Lesson learned. Need more batteries. I figure one or two would probably do it. One or two more. I just, I figured the last time I had finished filming, it was uh, mid-morning and I still had a lot of juice left on my second battery. And I had just run out that morning on my first battery. We'll play it by ear tomorrow. We'll see uh, how much of a charge I can get off my battery pack. But I can't see, unless I don't film all day <laughs> and just wait around like an idiot until night. Well, it started sprinkling a little bit, a little bit of snow. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, sleeping in this thing tonight. Uh, be a good experience though. See if the, uh, the amount of boughs that I collected is enough. I was standing on it when I was getting changed. I was standing on the bows and it seemed like it was insulating. Uh, standing without my boots, that is. That's alright. Yeah, you come up here to learn, right? It's all learning. Whether it's uh, camping, bushcrafty stuff, or just plain filmmaking. I could use a bit more. Oh, that flavor is just so good. Well, <laughs> I was going to save this until tomorrow night, but seeing as how that might not happen, I got a little festive for you. And since I don't really have any trees in sight, obviously they're around, but not in sight uh, as I eat, I figured I might wrap the the, uh, the decorations and the uh, the lights around myself here. I will be your tree. And how lovely are these branches. I, uh, I really hope you guys are having a, a good holiday so far. By the time this uh, video is up, no doubt, you guys will be uh, celebrating whatever you celebrate during this time, if you celebrate this time. And to all you guys who watch, I wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. Oh boy. Here's to you. 
Holy crap. Wow. Mm. For me, obviously I celebrate Christmas. I will be uh, spending time with family Christmas Eve. We'll open a few presents, you know. And uh, Christmas Day, I'll be going to my uncle's. Uncle Mike. He's having us over, and it's always such a blast. Uncle Mike, Andy, uh, Andy, <laughs> Auntie Andrea. and Cousin Nicole, and all the rest of the family that I know of, anyway. <clears throat> we, always have, well, we always have a tradition in our family with the uh, those uh, <clears throat> party crackers, or whatever you call them. You break them apart and they snap, and they've got a little toy or whatever. The ones that we get, they have a toy or a joke. And it's mandatory that you reveal the toy or the joke to the rest of the uh, the rest of the family, and then you put on the little color, colorful colorful crown. Goodness gracious, the colorful crown. Full day of hiking and setting up and all this stuff, and I can't even talk. It's uh, beer time. We've got a, uh, a Holst Holsten. It's a product of Germany, that purity law of uh, 1516, I think. Represent the 7%. Seven, 7 it's a nice, hearty beer. Good for the cold weather. Here's to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Do not tip over my one beer. <clears throat> With uh, no no real food in my stomach, that's going to go straight to the dome. That's the idea. Oh man, that is delicious. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. My favorite Christmas carol growing up was Jingle Bells when I was a kid. I would sing it. Uh, I would sing it in the summertime. Didn't matter. Summer break, spring break. While I was taking a bath. For me, Christmas is—it's uh, magical. I know it's not—it's not like that for for most people, but for me, it's a—it's uh, a time where I look forward to, even as a 30, 33 year old. And I, I just had such great memories. Uh, my dad would—the uh, way he would set up the presents. He, this one year, he, this one year, he bought us uh, army men, which was all a craze as a uh, ten-year-old. And he set up like a little battle scene. And me and my my older brother, we would uh, we would get up at like 5 a.m. and sneak up to the living room, and just to see what kind of presents we we got, to see what Santa had brought us. And we almost stepped on on these army men that were set up. What a great memory that was. Such a magical time. I remember I was so excited about all the different things we would do. Setting up the lights. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. 
camera just decided to stop recording. Let me uh, lavish myself with uh, the twinkle lights, as my wife likes to call them. Whenever we go camping, she always brings these things. It's awesome. But yeah, Christmas, such a magical time. And it's funny as you're as you're uh, as you're growing up. If, if Christmas was a big deal for you growing up, year after year, that mad that that excitement slowly starts to fade. And uh, that's why I'm looking forward to having kids. Uh, one of the reasons, anyway, is uh, Christmas time. Seeing, reliving Christmas through through their eyes. All the different events. And snow, my goodness. Snow, like, uh, it, I live in Vancouver, it doesn't snow often. But sometimes when it does, it buckets down. And... It just, I, I, I loved it. I loved every aspect of winter and Christmas. In fact, you know, being out here, that's why I love winter camping so much, because I love the snow. I absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's, it's an experience that you can't get um, in any other season when you're camping, is uh, just sort of the magical feeling that you get when you're in the still of the winter when you're surrounded by snow. Of course, no bugs. <clears throat> and a hot meal while you're in the snow like this with a fire up front and a, uh, uh, a nice shelter. <laughs> you gotta get this fire stoked up. Well, this is really hitting the spot, folks. All right. Uh, what a great Christmas feast of chicken noodle soup and one beer. Okay, it's time to get this fire rocking again. May as well decorate my shelter a little bit there. Okay, I'm gonna go collect collect a little more uh, twiggies and get this fire going again. I have been chilling next to the fire for the past oh I don't know. Two hours or so, maybe three. The fire is now out, so the moment of truth has begun. So I got my sleeping bag here and uh, my twinkle lights decorating my shelter, and I've got my my bivy bag. First time opening. Let's have a look. Take off my gloves for this. Okay, so it, it's just it's within this little plastic sleeve and this little water resistant bag it seems. Comes in a big uh, spaghetti string, apparently. Be careful not to rip it. Okay, so it's quite thin. So it says this is good for two people. I figured. 
since I'm going to have a sweeping bag inside of it, I better get a bigger one. Let's see if we can... Oh, okay. So I'm going to somehow have to stuff my sleeping bag inside this, which I'll do now. There it is, the uh, Mount Mountain Warehouse sleeping bag, the one I gave to Nala last time, no doubt full of uh, dog hair. Figure just take the end of it and stuff her in, sort it out, sort it out when I get inside. Now, which way do I want to be facing? That's the question. Not a whole lot of room in here. That should be just fine. Well, I'm gonna get inside this thing. Well, actually, no, I'm going to pee first and then get inside this thing. Uh, let me pee and uh, check back with you. One second. Already, already starting to get foggy in here, huh? Okay, let's get these boots off. Oh. And let's try and get... Yeah, let's try and get into this, uh, you know, let's lose the uh, Santa hat, huh? Let's try and get into this cocoon. Oh man, getting up to take a pee is going to be a nightmare. Oh. Let's lose the belt with the knife. The, uh, the knife holder. These right here are my Gore-Tex socks. They're quite, quite useful. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going inside with all my clothes. Ooh, get me changed. I want to be able to get get up and just pack up and leave without having to get changed into, into wet clothes or cold clothes. Uh, well, let's see how well this uh, bivy does. And my feet are pretty much on the snow. I'll need to find something to put them on my feet. Ah. Well, I do have one little trick up my sleeve for warmth. I have got a candle. And I did cheat a little. I did bring a lighter, but I'm only using it for this. Ah. Because my fire died, and I knew I knew it would die before I got a chance to light this. And what I've done is made a little cubby hole right in here. You can kind of see it, actually. So, whether or not that brings me any residual warmth, I'm not sure, but it will be a source of warmth for me to uh, warm my, hi my hands around, or warm my hands on, ah. and already I'm feeling 
quite warm, as I should inside a bivy and sleeping bag. And that calls for a little bit of Christmas cheer. Uh, pretty de dehydrated, actually. I uh, went and filled this with snow in the hopes to melt it next to the fire, but it died. So I've just got water and snow mixed. And looking at the, uh, the battery ind indicator, I'm almost out of my second battery. So unfortunately, there will be no second night. Not this time. I gotta rethink my, my batteries. This is not comfortable at all. <laughs> this is what I asked for. Anyways, guys, it's, uh, well, I'm not gonna go to bed yet, but I'm gonna relax for a bit and uh, check back with you in, in a few. And I'll let you know how the insulation is going on this uh, bow bed. Well, folks, this is home for tonight, as I said. I've been sitting on this uh, bow bed for you know, the past uh, almost half an hour now, and it feels all right. When I put pressure, like when I sit just on my butt, then I start feeling the uh, the cold through the bows. But if I lay on my body and kind of disperse my weight, it's a bit better. So we'll see. We'll see if that uh, persists in the morning. And that's where I'll catch you. That's where I'll see you next. Wish me luck on this minimalistic uh, shelter and bedding. I'll catch you guys in the morning. See you then. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Ugh. Well, <clears throat> snow is really coming down. <laughs> it's quite a bit of snow on the top of my shelter here. I slept uh, pretty well, actually. I got somewhat chilled throughout the night. I noticed uh, during the beginning of the night, or when I was first trying to sleep, I was really losing a lot of heat through the ground, but I think it's because these boughs were wet. Now that they're a bit dr more dry, at least the top layer, it's, doing a it's performing a lot better. <coughs> Thumbs up to this bi bivy bag as well, really worked noticeably well. Okay, battery is about to die and battery pack is pretty much expended. I had to charge this thing up again. Snow is coming down, wind's starting to blow a bit, and uh, I don't have uh, really any desire or will to uh, get a fire going to get coffee or anything, so I'm going, uh, going on empty, but that's uh, that's in par with the the scenario that we're we're doing here, isn't it? The candle's still going. Okay, I'm gonna get packed up. Ugh, worst part, right here. <laughs> yeah, this was good. Decent shelter. Decent first snow tr trench.
probably snowed a good uh, four to six inches. All right, pack up time. Pack up. Pack up time. Alright guys, I'm uh, packed up and ready to go. This was uh, a very interesting one, but I'm hungry. Batteries. Need more batteries. Alright, this, uh, this was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>